All right, 2000 Toyota Corolla. Right there. Son's car with the oil leak. All right, so here we are underneath. And this, straight up here, that's the top of the engine block. And you don't see anything coming out of the tailpipe? Or... No. Oh. Usually it looks like steam coming out. The old thing <clears throat> used to be if it was black smoke, it was because the engine was getting too much fuel, which these days they don't. Um, that's pretty hard to view anyway. Um, and if it was blue smoke, you were burning oil on that meant the engine had a lot of wear on it. And, uh, and then it's like white, it's almost like clouds. It's the, you know, it's from water from the cooling system uh -huh. going in to the, you know, because you get three different things sealed up. You've got the compression inside the engine, you've got the oil going through, and then the uh, water getting pumped through. Mm -hmm. And they've got to pass in between. The water? The coolant? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. It circulates all through the engine block, and then it's got to go up inside, <clears throat> up inside the cylinder head in places, you know. So all, all, well, two of those things have to circulate: the oil and the uh, the water. Okay. And they've got to be sealed, and then the compression inside the cylinder has to be sealed. And they don't want to mix. They don't want to mix. Right? Yeah, none of them really. So what you'll see is when you have a busted head gasket, uh, a lot of times the oil will look like a milkshake. It'll look like a frosty from Wendy's. Tell us what you see, John, for posterity. Well, I can see it. just probably what everybody else sees on this thing, this head. There, there is oil leaking by the head, but it kind of looks to me like it's coming from between the exhaust manifold and the head. Hmm. Which is a little bit further up. I don't know. It's, it's kind of hard to nail down what's leaking, but it's a lot wetter towards the, I'll say, the front of the engine, you know, where the the alternator belt is on that side, you know, that there's a lot more oil over there, Yeah. but it, it's caught in the back of the hole. Mm. Now what I just read online said that the, you put sealant here and not a gasket and said make sure you don't put too much, it will squeeze into there and plug it, plug up uh, some stuff. Mm -hmm. So they're saying the other side is the one leaking? Yeah, the one. because it doesn't have a gasket, yeah. it just uses sealant. Is that, so is that what this is being squeezed out right here? Yeah. That bit, that's the sealant? Yeah, this this right here was probably leftover sealant from when they put that mm -hmm. on there. Yeah, you can see it right there as well. Yep. A little chunk of it. So, that's good news. Well, the good thing is, is all you've got is a little bit of an oil leak. Yeah. Which not is not good. It's a pain in the butt. <coughs> but, number one, the engine's not using oil. So the important bits that are way down deep and expensive and a pain in the ass to get to, and believe me, it's worth your time to sit. It might bore you a bit, but sit and see if you can find a YouTube video that's about 20, 30 minutes long so that a guy can go in and show you, okay, here's what it looks like now, and here's that part you just took off, which is your valve cover, and then the exhaust and the intake and the alternator and all this other stuff that's got to come unbolted. When you get done with the cylinder head, you're going to be like, well, it's not that much more, and the whole engine and transmission could come out. Okay. And that's all that's really left in the, in, the, in the rest of the car. So it's a lot of work, and that's good news, because if that's all it is, is this cover leak, and we can keep after it. The thing you don't want to do is run it low on oil. Mm -hmm. You know, don't run it low on oil and don't let it overheat, and this engine will go forever, even with that little bit of oil leaking. And that's a pain in the butt, because that really bugs me. I hate it when it just leaks. Yeah. If the engine's using it, well, I know that the engine's like, okay, it's got a lot of miles on it. I, I don't ever buy expensive cars, so I always buy them cars cheap. But, <laughs> so I've got no money tied up in it, and if it busts in a couple of days, a couple of weeks, whatever it is, no big deal. And with this one here, the good news is, is you know, if you've got 130,000 miles on it, you probably get that many more. But you're just going to have to keep an eye on that oil leak. Yeah, let's keep on my show. And so. if you can use that stuff and that plugs the leak up, it stops it up a little bit. I don't see a whole lot of uh, uh, problem with it. I, I would say, you know, probably do some more research online about all the different, you know, if you see anything coming back where people say, oh, oh this stuff will clog your engine up, well, there's probably something bad. You probably want to stay away from it. All right, putting the valve cover back on. Looked at the gasket, looked pretty good. Don't think it's going to give us any problems. I have to just keep an eye on it. And um, average guy fix, just live with it, right? <laughs>
it's going to cost more than uh, in time and money than it'll take you in oil for the next year or so that you're going to own the car. Don't go too tight. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't have to be super tight. Uh, okay. I don't know. Don't want to risk snapping off a bolt then we'll yeah. Why is this uh, valve cover so oily? Probably leaking. Maybe it's leaking around the cap. Oh. Uh, Maybe I'm getting some blow by or something. Yeah, something. What? See how close this, these belts are right here when they bypass each other? Seems like it's too close. I mean, right there. So weird. Looks like it, but I mean, they manage. So Did you got it? Right. Say that again. Well, here's why the average guy is the average guy. Okay, what's that? Well, he doesn't pay attention to things. A professional will probably not drive around with a battery that looks like this. No. And that's why he makes all that money. Yeah. But all that corrosion is on <laughs> the... Fools like us. All that corrosion on the outside of the terminal. There's nothing that's, that's on the a, inside. That's a very charitable and a very optimistic outlook, <laughs> Ken. And I congratulate <laughs> you for that. That's, uh, that's a mess. Okay? And if it looks like that now... So there's a little job we can do later. Acid never sleeps, they say, right? Or is it rust? Well, so rust doesn't, but yeah. Probably acid. Uh, tell us what we're looking at here. Well, we're waiting for the uh, the app from Torque to start to communicate with uh, Bluetooth, the uh, piece that plugs into the uh, diagnostic port, and the uh, tablet have to link up. It takes a couple of minutes, usually maybe not a couple of minutes, but about a minute, and we should be getting some data here. And we're looking at, at least in these, this area, the four uh, graphs showing the uh, output from oxygen sensors. And I think what we did, we just went from, what was looped, open loop or the other way? 
anyway, we just started reading the data, so that's what you're waiting for. And those are the two that are after the. Yes. So they would warm up slower, or or they uh, activate. You, you know, I don't know. Uh, like I said, there's. Uh, I can't remember now, closed loop or open loop. When you first start the car up, it's in, um, I think that's called open loop, can't remember. Uh, but it's, it just goes back to like a default sort of setting. Mm -hmm. And then when the closed loop comes in, it starts reading data from the various sensors, I guess. This is all stuff that you can look up uh, online and get better information than I'm giving, but because uh, that's where I get all my information, or usually from that, or, or friends that are mechanics, but uh, I've never studied it, but I think that's what we got a, a taste of right there. It takes a minute for the engine to warm up once it gets to temperature, it switches over to reading the data that we're watching now. Which was the new one you put in, the left? This one. Yeah, okay. And that was... I originally had yeah. this set up differently if you were looking at it earlier, but this one was up here and it was the one that was acting up. But once I nailed down which one was which, I rearranged these, so... These will be uh, these will be the two in the front on either side of the engine, and these will be towards the back, downstream. And I would have to say that looks a lot better than what we were getting. I'm going to have to live with this for a couple of days and keep a close eye on the on the the data as it comes up like this. But I'm uh, I'm pretty encouraged by that. Yeah. Let's see. Go back. 